Ah, welcome back my fellow viewers to another Crusader Kings 3 video. It's been a while since the last one, but I promised that I would upload a video about CK3 to spice things up a bit, so here it is. And what shall we be playing as today, you may be wondering. Will we be playing in 1066 as one of the Iberian Kingdoms? Will we be playing during the Norman Conquest of England? What about the 867 start date with the Frankish Kingdoms? Or maybe during the height of the Viking Age? Well, if you have seen the title and the thumbnail of the video, you already know the answer. Instead of either going to 867 or 1066, we shall be going back in time to 769 to the era of the early Middle Ages, using the mod that brings back the start date from CK2. And to be more specific, we shall be playing as the last remnant of the Sassanid Empire. Today we shall be starting out as Count Mesrat, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, with the ambition of not only restoring the Persian Empire, but also returning the Zoroastrian faith and finally oust the heretical Muslims from Persia. So with the introduction out of the way, let's start the journey. We started out as a small count in modern name Afghanistan with almost no men or economy to speak of, with the only advantage having our dynasty somewhat known to the world, but that's about it really. Since our objective is to restore the old Sassanid Empire and to become the Sao Xiant, I also hope I'm pronouncing that right, we are a long way to go for both things. If we want to not only reclaim Persia but also survive the new threats by heretical Muslim worshippers, we will need to expand and secure a dominion from which we will launch our reconquest for that ma and for that matter, we shall conquer the county surrounding us with the help of our Sumbul allies. And you know something that happened a lot during this playthrough is that my ruler would die just after declaring war. It's just as if it were some type of curse, you know. So keep that in mind. As like I said, like I said, it happened a lot of times in this video. Either way, I secured the three uh, counties neighboring me, and just as I was marrying my daughter to a random Indian man for an alliance, I was attacked, so I would say that I was pretty lucky if you ask me. Also during the war I got enough money to create my duchy, securing my survival and our new starting place from which we will reconquer Persia. I defeated the invaders and I was set on create my first kingdom, titled before going into Persia proper. After defeating the Muslim duke to my west, the rest of my neighbors to the west were small Zoroastrian counties just like me, so it was time to bring them back into the fold. And by 832, uh, not even 100 years had passed, with the necessary counties I was able to declare myself the Shah of Transoxiana. And while this was really good since I was now a king, the problem was that this kingdom title was not inside the Jew realm of the Persian Empire, so it was time to start adver our adventure retaking Persia. I continued to expand my realm until I noticed that the Amirate to the south was no longer allied with the Abbasids since I don't know how they got an alliance but whatever. So I took this opportunity to advance southward into Pre Persia proper. The Muslims were defeated and after a few other wars we were set 
and secured from bigger threats unless it was Tibet, but they were too busy dealing with India, so, so that was not a concern. And as my current ruler was about to die, I noticed that the Thai Sultanate suffered a mild cause of revolts and lost all of their allies, including most of their troops, so I used my invaded kingdom Casus Belli for a first proper thrust into modern day Iran. Oh, and remember why I said at the beginning of the video about how my rulers would die after declaring war? Well, you know what, let's just start actually counting to see how many times this happened. Either way, since they had basically no army to speak of, I defeated them, and now all of northeastern Iran was mine. And thanks to the revolts the Sultanate suffered before, I was able to cherry pick the counties and duchies, so you know what that means. But as I was dealing with a duchy, a random guy declared war for a duchy inside the old kingdom of Transoxiana title. And he had a few allies to back him up, and because I had been recording non-stop by this point, and also since those problems barely provided resources to me, I gave him the duchy. This would turn out to be a bad idea, since he would constantly join wars against me, so yeah, that was a bit of a noops. But then the guys who I took the kingdom title from came back to take a county, and since this actually counted towards restoring the Air Persian Empire, I had to go in and teach them a lesson. As I was mopping up the rest of the small realms, I was able to create a holy order, and let me tell you, they would come in handy later on during many of my future wars with big players like the Arabians and, spoiler alert, the Byzantines. I continued my conquest and even took down the kingdom title of Kabulistan. But then I noticed that a few ungrateful vassals wanted independence. So since I really did not care about the old Transoxiana title anymore, but cared about my vassals in Persia to avoid a proper rebellion popping off, I destroyed the title of tr the kingdom of Transoxiana and released the ungrateful vassals. And guess what? Both of them died to the Muslims up north, so Great idea, they're going independent. Again, it was that time of the year where my ruler was about to die, so I used the Casus Belli for the whole kingdom of Persia and one of the bigger realms of the region. Oh, and my ruler died during the war, so that's three times by now. The war was more or less on equal terms, but I had an advantage. Actually, two. One was that I had a lot of money for good old mercenaries, and two, that holy order I created earlier was a godsend. And after a few important battles and wasting more than 80% of the entire treasury, most of the kingdom of Persia was now mine. Now only a few, a few realms were big enough to put a fight against my realm. So I continued to clean up the borders and decided to end the remnants of the first sultanate by declaring war for the whole kingdom at once. Once again, after a few sieges of land and about, they were no more. So it was time to take the other duchy that would connect her borders with the Indian princess. At this point, I was halfway there to restore the Persian Empire title. And just so happens that the Abbasids, well, not really the Abbasids anymore, were really struggling to, so I decided to help them out by eating a big chunk of their holdings in Persia.
Ooh, and what is that? Four times now? Also, since all of the realms were stuck with confederate patrician, the kingdom of Persia was created by, su by succession, so now I had a nice green color. I fought the Arabians multiple times, and after losing half of its army, the caliph surrendered, so it was now looking like modern in Iran, with some counties mis missing, especially in the northwest. But now I controlled three of the five holy sites of the Zoroastrian faith, so it was time to restore the Masai... Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that uh, priesthood. Seeing the chaos in the northwest of Persia, it was a great time to launch a full invasion of the Kingdom Tile, and to war we go. As expected of the mess that was the realm during the succession it suffered, I conquered it pretty easily, but it appeared as though that some vassal in the Byzantine Empire declared war, so I had to defeat their armies before white piecing them. After a while, Arabia collapsed yet again, so that meant I had to clean up those borders and after conquering just enough provinces from the counties that popped out of Arabia and in the east, I had enough to create the Persian Empire title. So, one of the objectives list was now done. We had now secured Persia and at last after 300 years or 3 centuries after the collapse of, of the original Sassanid Empire, the Empire was back in action under my enlightened rule. But there were some counties that were still in control of the major powers, i.e. Syria that popped out of Iberia and the Byzantines, since the Arabians were collapsing every 5, se five seconds. So before attacking the Byzantines, we might as well burn Arabia once again, just like how they burned Persia three centuries before. Not surprising at all, they did not even put up a fight. And finally, the great emperor has finally passed away, and unexpectedly, he did not die after declaring war, although technically there was a rebellion happening, but since he did not declare the, the war on them, so I will leave it up to you to decide where their discounts as part of the curse I mentioned earlier. Either way, Syria was getting attacked by the Byzantines, so it was the perfect opportunity to take the, land, the lands that we needed for ourselves. And you can imagine the result of that, how that war went when, for the Syrians when they were declared war by two massive empires. Yet again, Arabia spread out more counties, so it was time again to in integrate them back into the fold. Being as weak as ever, I only needed a duchy from the Arabians before I had to deal with the bloody Byzantines, so it was fine to bully Arabia again.
With almost all counties under my control, I for actually forgot the duchy that Syria still had, so yet again we were marching to the west. With all said and done, I married my daughter to another random Indian man just like I did at the beginning of the video, as I would need every help I can get in the war against the Byzantines. Everything was ready to go, and as such, it was time to revive the Greco-Persian Wars or the byzantine sassanid Wars in full glory just like in the good old days. With the money that was accumulated before the war, I bought the biggest and most terrifying mercenary companies I could get for a war as well as, as I used my trusty holy order I created earlier. And just like that, a series of bloody conflicts would spill over the border regions with thousands and thousands of soldiers dying in the battlefields in the name of one of the two behemoths. After a while, the Byzantines lost two-thirds of their armies in a devastating defeat at the hands of their old enemies. But another war would come as I still needed one final county as, as such, thousands of lives would be lost over a single county. Oh, and if you thought that the curse was over, well, think again as just after the second war with the Byzantines started, the Empress died, so that qualifies for the score. Either way, after defeating the Byzantine armies decisively two times, by now, they surrendered the province to me on uniting the exclave we controlled and now it was time for, for what we have all been waiting for. And as such, that would have been the case, but I forgot one random province in Afghanistan, so that climatic war with the Byzantine was for nothing and as such, an anti-climatic way to get the decision would be to get this final county, but oh well. After that I got all the core requirements in terms of land, but I need to get level 4 of devotion with my current ruler, and after that I would be ready to become the Saoxiant. So let's fast forward for a while. Much, much, much later. As I was invading Syria since I was really bored at this point, that scoundrel known as the Byzantine Emperor thought it would have been a good idea to backstab me while I was busy in Syria. As such, I had to teach him that insolence gets him nowhere. Worst of all, he still does not understand that I have a bigger treasury than what he could ever imagine as such the finest mercenary groups were at the ready for this. And just like... That his insolence has cost him 1.5k gold and half of his shitty army. With the Byzantines gone, I was able to end the war in Syria and now it was time for the decision. After this glorious victory, it became undeniable that my current ruler was worthy of becoming the chosen savior that Zoroaster had prophesied a long time ago. By driving out the Muslims and restoring the Zoroastrian rule over the entirety of the Persian Empire, a pious ruler may be recognized to be the Zoroastrian prophesied Saoxiant, the chosen savior of the world. We gain the trait the Saoxiant with every descendant after this ruler would get a trait the Saoxiant descendant. So, it's final time to take the decision. Ever since the Sassanid Empire succumbed to the Arab invasions, Persia has suffered under the joke of Mohammedan rulers. The last remnants of the old Zoroastrian order retreated north into the plains of Central Asia, but now, at long last, Zoroastrian rule over Persia has been restored. This miraculous recovery can only be attributed to my brilliant leadership, and many amongst the clergy have decreed me to be the Saoxiant the savior of the world that Zoroaster himself spoke of thousands of years ago. After embracing this role, I am now revered as a holy icon by Zoroastrians everywhere. I shall bring benefit to all.
With such an accomplishment done, it's only natural to celebrate it. And what a better way to celebrate this than to destroy this insolent Byzantine Emperor and take Armenia while he is at his weakest. We have proven that the Greeks are nothing more than weaklings by defeating them time and time again, showing our might four times in a row. Nothing shall stop this new golden era for the Persian Empire. Also, that will be the case, except that Pope launched a crusade for Syria during the war I had with the Byzantines, and since I had some the your land for the Kingdom of Syria, and like I said, as I was fighting the Byzantines, I could not support the Muslims and the Catholics took some counties. But who needs them when I can have the whole of Armenia? And such, we have reached the end of this campaign. After 100 years of fighting heretics and reclaiming Persia for the faithful, the Sassanid Empire is back with many new plans and conquests lying beyond. But for now, the Emperor Fahad has become the Saoshant and delivered the Byzantines three major defeats, from which they will not recover from them anytime soon. Persia now stands as the hegemon of the East, with the only Tibet as its rival. This is only just the start of a new Persian golden era, and new adventures lie in the future, but that's for another day. So that was the end of the video, I really hope you enjoyed the CK3 video to change it up a bit from regular Hoi4 videos, but don't worry, they're not going anywhere, so expect one final Hoi4 video for the end of the year. This was the Fact 2's expert. You are dismissed, soldier!